there! Today we're going to talk about figured bass. We're listening to a sonata by George Philip Telemann that uses figured bass. Okay, let's get started. The numeric symbols that we've been using uh, to indicate chord inversions, like 6 for first inversion and 6-4 for second inversion, these numbers have their origin in the practice of figured bass. This was uh, used in the 18th century, the Baroque era, and it was con continued to be used throughout the Baroque period. Um, essentially what would happen was that uh, keyboard players would be given a bass line and were expected to be able to improvise chords over that bass line by interpreting the figures that were written below the bass line. And they called that realizing the figured bass. It's kind of similar to uh, how jazz musicians today or popular musicians will play from lead sheets. Except in, in um, our day, you're given the melody and some chord symbols to play, some chords to play with that melody. But in the Baroque period, they were given the bass line, which was, everything was kind of organized around that bass line. Um, and these figures would indicate what, they would sort of uh, tell you what chords would go with uh, that bass line. So here's an example of a figured bass. We see it's just a bass line and then below it all of these numbers. Um, so we need to figure out what these numbers mean so that we can interpret these figured basses. Alright, so here's the bass line by itself. a possible realization of that. It doesn't have to be played exactly this way, but here's a realization that interprets those figures. Okay. Alright, so keyboard players at the time would need to be able to create that harmony from bass lines. Composers were kind of lazy in not wanting to write out all those other parts of the harmony. Just the bass line. Alright, so first of all, the numbers that we see in figured bass always represent intervals above the bass note. So we're figuring out intervals from the bass. Figured bass. Alright, so first of all, we see, if you see a 5 and a 3, that would be a fifth and a third above the bass. So that's a root position triad. So this G here, a third and a fifth above that gives you a root position triad. Uh, a six and a three, like we see in the first chord, is a sixth and a third, which is essentially a first inversion triad. Okay? And a six and a four, is a fourth and a sixth above the bass or a second inversion triad. Okay. Um, they weren't necessarily thinking of inversions of chords at that time. Uh, that theory was being developed. But they knew how to play these sonorities. Okay, so there's uh, the, what the numbers mean. Um, but there's again br abbreviations like we use in our inversion symbols now. Um, if you just have a 6 by itself, that indicates a first inversion triad as well, and it's implied that there's also a third. So if there's not a number there, it's probably 3. So here I just have a, there's the 6th, but there's also a 3, so that's a first inversion triad EGB. If you see a 7, a 6, 5, a 4, 3, or a 2, those are the different positions of a 7th chord. Uh, we see few examples of that. So there's a 6-5 in the second chord there. That's a first inversion seventh chord with a fifth and a sixth above the bass. But also there's an implied three again, which would complete the seventh chord. So I have, there's my bass note, there's a five, there's a six, and it's implied that there's also a third to give me the full seventh chord. All right, so that's an abbreviation. Okay, there's also a few non-numeric symbols, such as the sharps and flats and naturals. If you see a flat or a natural sharp next to a number, it means to apply that 
accidental directly to the pitch, to that pitch above the bass. So here I have a six um, natural, so that means the sixth above the bass note should be a C natural, should be a natural. And then of course there's an implied third as well, so it's a first inversion. In this case it ends up being a C major triad. Um, going back, let's see, to that seven, if I have I have the C natural again, a seven natural, and the third and the fifth are implied because it's a root position seventh chord, right? Okay, and if you see an accidental that's all by itself, that is not next to a number, but maybe above it, or sorry, below it, or just by itself, that always means three, a third above the bass. Okay, um, so usually that's a third of the chord. So in this one, we have F sharp with a five, and a sharp by itself, that's the third. So I'm going to put a sharp on the third, making an F sharp major triad. Yeah, so if you see an accidental by itself, it always means the third above the bass. Um, if you see a slash through a number, or sometimes a plus next to a number, that means to raise the pitch. A slash means raise. A slash through prices means to lower prices, but through a pitch, or sorry, through a number means to raise the pitch. So that means the same thing as if it said uh, six with a sharp next to it. But F sharp, and then here's my regular sixth above, but I'm going to raise that to D sharp, the third. The three is still implied, so it's a first inversion. It ends up being a D sharp diminished first inversion triad. Okay, I think we've figured out almost all of these. Um, now there's a few bass notes that don't have any figures. So how do we interpret those? Um, if the bass note is repeated, that means to just continue using the previous figure. So I have in this first one a five sharp, and then the F sharp repeats, so it's the same chord. And then likewise after that, and then however, if there's a new bass note and it has no figure, then we'll interpret that as a root position triad. Okay, so if an E and it has no figure, and it's a new note, it'll just be a root position chord. All right. Well, let's see. We have pretty much harmonized everything here. So um, here's the realization. Okay, and if that weren't complicated enough. Um, the keyboard player is going to also want to space out those tries. Not they're not going to all be close position. He's going to add octaves, he or she, and some of the notes are going to be doubled. They're going to do essentially uh, four-part voice leading. They're going to improvise it. So it was a complicated job. Um, so here's the same chord progression now with the spacing and doubling being improvised by the performer, and we come up with something like this. So that's the job of uh, a Baroque keyboard player, was to improvise or to realize figured bass symbols. We're going to use figured bass symbols also. Um, you'll have exercises where you have a bass line with figures and you'll need to do voice leading and spelling and chord progressions over that bass line. You won't need to have to improvise it on the spot, but you need to be able to interpret the same symbols. Uh, to uh, and essentially realize these figured bases. Okay, I think that's it.